Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, in the previous panel, we had a discussion about the fact that the U.S. needs to decouple from China and Russia and other foreign sources for nuclear fuel. And, and, and one of the things that I've really been pushing is the uh, conversion to advanced nuclear. But, but specifically following the model uh, utilized by France uh, with their standard design, but more specifically, the model of uh, what we use with, with our nuclear fleet, our submarines and aircraft carriers. And uh, uh, Mr. Mayor Phil, I just I want to ask you, and um, uh, what is your what what are your thoughts about the ability to for the NRC to expeditiously permit? Uh, small uh, modular nuclear reactors? Um, I have a couple of different views. First one is, as we discussed, I don't think the Part 53 process that they're coming up with is going to be helpful and useful. Having said that, um, I think there is uh, an identification that the existing pro two-step process under Part 50 and the one-step process that can be used under um, Part 52 can be used to deploy these reactor designs. What I think is going to be important going forward is having a framework that the agency can deploy in which after they have reviewed the first version of that design, whether it's TerraPower, X Energy, Terrestrial, Oklo, or others, that, the, that what is required to, to deploy the next version of that same design should really be only focused on site-specific factors and make it as, as speedy as possible. But isn't that one of the advantages of the small uh, modular reactors is that because they can be constructed outside fabricated parts that site location, um, it, it's much easier to, to locate one of these than it is the traditional nuclear reactor. Plus, they will fit into the grid where you got all kind of grid issues with renewables and with, with the traditional nuclear, isn't that? I, that's advantage? completely the case. I used to, be, I used to work in the, in the construction industry. We, we sold combined cycle gas units. Once, once you've got that design down, a nuclear reactor designed down and licensed, it should be a very similar process. In the 2000s, we put in about 1,000 gigawatts of gas, either combined cycle, simple cycle, or, or other combustion units. The goal ought to be to be able to get to a point where we can deploy nuclear reactors, advanced nuclear reactors, in a similar, efficient way. Do you also use a lot less land space than you do with the renewables and, and, the, and what we normally have with, with, with traditional nuclear? And the other thing I want to point out is because I keep hearing concerns about uh, the use of, of nuclear. With the, these are, are, are almost exactly the same. They have a little more generating capacity than, than a, a, a reactor on an aircraft carrier or a nuclear submarine. But the U.S. Navy has got 6,200 reactor years. That's over a 50-year period with no accidents. This, this should be what I think the public should be pushing us toward. Uh, no, no emissions. These are modular units that are made, fabricated and located on a site connecting with the grid. It, it seems to me, in terms of eliminating emissions or reducing emissions, this is the best uh, course to follow. And, and the last thing is, is being able to recycle what we have always considered spent fuel rods. Because my understanding is, again, going back somewhat to the French design, but what we could design with these, um, we could recover about 96% of the, of the recoverable material from spent fuel rods. And, and that would decouple us to a certain extent from foreign supply. Yeah, to your point, Congressman, um, we regularly park two aircraft carriers in San Diego, each of which contains two nuclear reactors. The public lives immediately in proximity to those, to, to those reactors, and nobody thinks anything about it because of their safety. And that's, and that's a goal that, that, in my view, we could have for advanced nuclear technologies. On, on your second point, advanced reactors do bring with them the promise of reutilizing what is considered now a waste, use nuclear fuel, and making it into a resource. And there are, um, from my count, probably at least four or five different companies out there today evaluating the potential of reutilizing that fuel, and I think that's a very exciting thing going forward. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I really appreciate the opportunity to have hearings like this. I think it's extremely helpful, and 
And hopefully if the public's paying attention to this, they, got a, they should get a sense that we have a good idea of where we need to go. With that, I yield back. 